This video comes from Draw Makes Paint. Reasons not to blend while painting and how to break the habit. So I'm so excited for this. I've seen a video from him before that was good quality. Hopefully this is too. And it's a topic that I'm very passionate about. So let's see what he has to offer. I have a lot of advice on this topic, but maybe he will say everything that I'm thinking about. Let's find out. So I want to talk about blending and uh, the importance of not blending until you have uh, the canvas covered. You know, it, it, if you're painting an object, you should paint the entire object and have all the canvas covered and all your color basically put in before you do any blending at all. Yeah, that's, you know, that right there, that's pretty good advice. Get everything covered, get the full surface covered before you even start blending. And that's, you know, something that I'm doing all the time. I also, I, I don't know that I really blend at all, actually. I'm, I'm very against blending. Even in students that are successful with my method and are doing well, the one thing that persists and the one thing that they can't seem to stop doing is over blending or overworking, uh, you know, whatever they're painting. Yeah, that's, I think, with any, anybody who's really getting into painting, I think that's one of the biggest struggles for beginners is this overworking or over blending you just keep going over the same surface again and again, and you get a very cartoonish look. It doesn't really look like it's, uh, you know, sharp or, or that it has weight to it. It doesn't feel like it's solid. It feels um, just kind of blurry, but in a very in a very bad way. It's not like that nice fuzzy feel. It's a very, yeah, kind of cartoonish look. If you look at the hair, and this goes for any any realist artist that paints with a, with a strong stroke. Uh, there's nothing there. It's ugly. It doesn't look like hair when you get up close. It doesn't look like porcelain if it's a teapot. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't look like um, what it is when you get up close. It's sort of that, that magic trick where you're in a museum and you look at a beautiful painting and then you, as you walk up close to it, you realize it's just a bunch of jumbled brushwork. Yeah, so that's, that's a strong point to be made. I would also like to point out somebody like Rembrandt or Titian. They are very rough and loose. So a lot of their you know, different work and, and what they're doing with edges is going to be very blurry if you get up close to it. And you're going to see that it's actually just many different parts that are kind of overlapping each other. I like to talk about and uh, reference what Rembrandt does as stitching. That's what I like to call it, stitching because it's almost like he's weaving together all of these different layers rather than just sitting there and, and blending it out to a very fine point uh, throughout, throughout the entire process. He's allowing it to build up through layers by kind of overlapping and weaving together these different parts. And that's really the essence of the problem because when you're sitting there painting and trying to paint something and make it look real, you want, it to, you want to be able to see it and the reality is, is that when you're up close, you don't see it. As an artist, you see brushwork, you see, you see a mess of paint and color, and uh, and you don't actually see the the the, the tea cup or, or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean that's 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 fair. But I think uh, one thing you can do to kind of combat that is to make sure you're using long brushes and make sure you're taking distance and then painting with confidence. That's absolutely crucial. You wanna lay these things on and just leave it there and allow yourself to work in a bold, confident manner because that's going to lead to more of these results uh, that we're kind of looking for. But let's say you, you do one painting. Let's, let's just say it's a still life and you're gonna work from live and, uh, or from a photograph. But, but I, I say I prefer life just because I know that there's so many poor quality photographs out there. And if you work from life, you know the colors are gonna be fantastic and good and everything else. Plus, a lot of times when you work from life, it's easier to paint with a stronger stroke. And when you work from a photograph and it's right in front of your face, you tend to overpaint the detail because you can see the detail so well. Yeah, that's, that's a strong point right there. That's one of the main reasons I, I will never use photos is that if you're actually looking at that photo, it's often going to be more detailed than what you see in reality, and that's going to confuse you in a way. It's very difficult to actually find the focus and to find the uh, clarity on an on a equal level to what you see in reality. In reality, when you're looking at your model, 
it becomes simplified and you're forced to simplify in a different way compared to having that photo right up next to your painting, it's, it's a completely different process. So having live models is really going to be crucial for getting these nice bold results. It's going to force you to simplify. You can't get into all those details because it's just not possible to see it in life from that distance. Say that you're going to set up a still life and you're going to paint it. And what I propose as the exercise is that you don't think about trying to do a pretty painting. In fact, I would say that the only rule that you need to follow is that your values need to be right and your colors need to be right. And that means that you're using your color checker and you're checking all your colors. You're not guessing. You're letting the color checker guide you, but you're laying in your color. And if you get all your values right, and they don't have to be perfect, but if you get your values more or less right, if that finished painting is ugly and horrible and poorly painted and, 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 is, you know, and everybody hates it, then you've succeeded. You've, you get an A for the course as long as your values are right. Okay, this, this is an interesting idea. I mean, this is a very important subject to really, to really focus on because it's often a problem that people are actually changing completely from what they actually see in the model. They're completely changing it into their painting to suit what they're hoping for. So it is an interesting idea here. I have some suggestions of my own, but let's see what else he has to add to that before I offer my, my advice here. If you blend one stroke, if you go in there and fix something by pushing it around and playing with it, which is blending, or by even blending because you think you think things don't look smooth and it looks jumbled and you want it to be like a, a smooth teapot. You're just simply not allowed to do that. The whole point of this exercise is to finish with a very ugly painting that you hate everything about, but your values are right. So he's saying to paint directly. You're not allowed to blend. Paint directly, you're not allowed to blend. You just put it down exactly where you see it and you don't you know, push it around into other areas. That is what I was looking for, that's what I was hoping for. That's what I advise all of my students to do because it's going to force you to paint directly, to actually mix up the color or the value that you're looking for and to put it down with some confidence. If you can't just sit there and blend it out, then you're going to be forced to really figure it out and put it there where you see it and that is crucial. That is so crucial. That's what really leads to a you know, bold, confident look, is putting it down and leaving it and not blending out into nothingness. You're always looking at your painting and you're saying, how can I make this look better? How can I fix this? How can I make this look pretty to my eye, you know, a, a foot from your face or two feet from your face, as opposed to, uh, how it's going to look at a room's length. And even then, it's hard to judge because of the artist curse, because of this, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons. But especially before you have the canvas covered, you really can't make a judgment about your values. That's a really good point. Because you have this relative contrast coming from everything around, especially if you're working on, you know, something like a white canvas, that's, that's going to be an absolute nightmare. You really want to make sure you're filling in the space and just going in quick, bold, confident in the beginning because that's going to lead to a more accurate level of contrast. Usually I'm going to be looking for my range of values to be, to be just slightly closer towards the middle, but I'm going to put them down even if I don't really trust it because I know the way that I'm mixing my palette, I use the limited palette, I'm pre-mixing my shadows, I'm pre-mixing all of these light side colors and I have everything kind of in, in perspective already mixed on my palette. So now all I need to do is just place it down. So when you first start to place these things down, like you're first putting in the shadows, it's going to look like it's too exaggerated. It's going to look like it's too dark. Same with, you know, when you first put down these really warm parts of the face, it's going to look like it's too warm or that it's too dark, even though it's uh, kind of in a darker area. And the reason for that is just that you haven't filled in all that space to give you the necessary contrast to make it look right. So, especially in the beginning, you just gotta, you gotta put it down confidently, 
get some solid mixtures. I recommend mixing up a nice brown for the shadows, some gray for those kind of blending mid-tones, and then get yourself a good highlight color and a good light side flesh color if you're working on a portrait. And just put those down as quickly as possible exactly where you see them and that will really take you far. Literally just laying in those splotches of color in any old way you want and it's just amazing what you can get away with. Uh, I mean it doesn't matter what sort of brushwork you have. It doesn't have to even look like sergeants. You can go out there and find all kinds of different brushwork but the common denominator to all of those is that the color is not all smoothed together into this sort of monochromatic, smooth uh, uh, wash of, of, of color. Yeah, that's, that's the crucial part right there, is that you're allowing for there to be this separation and contrast, and you need that. You need that in the foundation. You need that early on, because you're going to have to start refining as you move forward, so you want to start broad and bold and get these nice separations because then once you start to layer over that, it's naturally going to soften and blend and you're going to start working into more detailed areas. So then you're going to be able to get more of those soft qualities. So yeah, basically the reasons that you shouldn't blend are that you're going to get more bold, confident mark making if you don't blend. You're gonna lay down these broader foundations, which is also going to help to get better likeness with your model. If you look for these big solid shapes, your painting's gonna feel more solid, you're gonna get more contrast, and then it's gonna give you something much better and much more lively to move forward with. So throughout the entire painting, you should really be kind of layering them on top of each other rather than blending them together because that's just going to lead much more lively effects. It's going to feel more solid. It's going to feel more like, you know, that Rembrandt type feeling rather than, uh, you know, cartoonish kind of amateur, like smoothed out type painting. So don't blend together your brushwork. Just put it down on the canvas exactly as you see it in the model and move quickly. Move quickly so you can really just get this down without overthinking it or overseeing it and that will do you a lot of good. For more in-depth lessons about how to layer your painting and build up transparency through the layers, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Nick Thurman. Otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you want me to react to a video, leave it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.